Let's go back. So what are some principles we can get? What are some principles to apply so that we can help determine what modesty and what gender clothing is? Because, you know, you kind of think, well, if, if the Bible doesn't define it, how then do we determine what, a modest what modest clothing is? How do we then determine what costly array is? How do we determine what um, women and men's clothing are? And, you know, at this point, let's say I've gone through these sermons, at this point you might feel a level of uncertainty, right? Because before you're like, well, you know, I knew what men's clothing were, and I knew what women's clothing were. And, and now you might be feeling uneasy because it's like, well, the Victor's just blurred the lines, which I don't think you should have a problem with because we, we have a blurred line when it comes to modesty. We have a blurred line when it comes, comes to other things, right? So that's not an issue for me. So maybe you can ha take, take solace in the certainty that you know it's uncertain. You know, like, I don't have a problem, because I know this is how, it's, it's an uncertain thing, so I'm fine with that. I, I, I know for certain that it's uncertain, because the Bible doesn't say uh, exactly what it is. Um, so because some Bible principles don't mention specifics, we can't hold others to our own standards. Because the Bible doesn't say what a man's garment is or what a woman's garment is, I can't create my own rule, create my own commandment, and apply it to you, because I'm not God. So I can't say that I think pants is a man's garment and therefore you shouldn't wear pants as a woman or you know your wife shouldn't wear pants as a woman because I didn't that's not that's not the bible that's that's my own opinion. So when it comes to me so I've I've preached on modesty and I've preached on nakedness and 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 even now preaching on gender all I've given you if you realize I've given you my opinions. And that's all they'll ever be. You know all you know I have bible principles to determine why I have those opinions. And you can choose whether or not to adopt those opinions yourself, but there'll never be commandments to you unless you agree with my opinions. If you agree with those opinions, then that's when they will become commandments for you. So you can ignore my opinions, but you can't ignore the biblical principles. You may come to different conclusions or you may come to the same conclusions. And that's why I'm, I'm trying to be cautious when I give my opinion that I say, this is what I believe. Like in my opinion, you know, this is to me a woman's garment because I can't say dogmatically this is a woman's garment unless I can show you and prove it from the Bible. So let's have a look at a couple of principles in the Bible of how we can help determine uh, or give ourselves you know, a personal measure of conscience of how to determine what is right and what is wrong for thing areas of, uh, that are great. Now in 1 Corinthians 10 we get a few principles here. And really, this is the topic, and I've touched on it a couple of times, but this is again the topic of doubtful disputations. Things where they're not necessarily right or wrong, but there are principles to guide our decisions. Look at what Paul writes here in 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So what is he saying here? He's saying, hey, there's a lot of things, or all things for me are right to do, uh, obviously, when it comes to things that are of doubtful disputations, but not everything is good for other people if I do them. They don't necessarily build up somebody else. And this is why he says in verse 24, Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. So his example that he gives is about eating foods offered to idols. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience' sake. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience' sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other, for why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. So what are two principles we can get from this passage? Because Paul is saying here, well, if you know this food is offered to idols, you wouldn't eat it knowing what that other person believes. So it's not that your conscience is judging you, but you're taking into consideration the conscience of the other person and doing what's right by them. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth, when it says in verse 24. The other principle we can get from this passage in verse 31, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. So I think there are two main principles in this passage. One is you always do what's right by God. Whatever you do, you do all to the glory of God. You always do what's best for God. That's why you will take into consideration the needs of others 
but you might not necessarily do what they want because you always want to do what's right. Because sometimes what's right to do and what's best for them is not always what they want. Do you know? So you, you always serve God first. You take into consideration the needs and pitfalls of others, but that doesn't determine what you do. And this is important because it's like in the principle of modest apparel. You know, when sometimes people will use the line of reasoning, well, you should dress a certain way because the way you dress men might last after you. Yes, but then a man's lust can be so uncontrolled that, you know, like we were saying, you could wear like a Muslim garment and men would still last after you. You might think you've got beautiful eyes and whatever. So that's not the deter determination. You do what's right by God. You do what is best. That doesn't necessarily mean you, you are uh, judged by another man's conscience. But out of love, you will strive to minimize the impact of your actions on other people. So we've got two principles there. One is do what's best by God. And the other principle is you do what's best by others, not necessarily what they want you to do. You do what's best for them. But I will say this. So the attitude, if somebody has the attitude of, well, I don't care what people think. I'm just going to wear whatever I want. You know, I don't care <laughs> like whether, what you think of me or, or how you look at me. That's the wrong attitude, right? Because one principle we are getting from this is, hey, you have to seek another man's wealth. You do have to take into consideration other people's thoughts. So if your attitude is, I don't care what other people think, that is a sin because you're in direct disobedience to this passage, which is saying, hey, take into consideration other people's well-being. Um, and so you ought to care. So that's two principles there. Let's look at some principles in Romans 14. I'll continue here says here, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. So again, there's that seeking another man's wealth. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus, there, there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that it esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So this is an interesting passage here because what P Paul is teaching us here is saying, even if the thing that you're doing is not in and of itself sinful, if you think it is sinful, then it is wrong for you. If you esteem it to be unclean, then for you it is unclean. And this is where your conscience comes in because if you believe you're doing something and it's not the best thing to do, it's not the right thing to do, then you are sinning. Because if you esteem it to be unclean, to you it is unclean. So you either don't do it or you need to think about it and see, hey, is this actually a sin? And maybe change your convictions there. Um, but if you do it, esteeming it to be unclean, it is unclean to you. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. So again, touching on the fact that we ought to care about our brothers and sisters in Christ and how it affects them. Um, otherwise, you're not loving your brother and sister in Christ. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with, with offence. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine or anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith, it is sin. So what I believe Paul is teaching here um, through the Holy Ghost in Romans 14 is he's basically making that principle. If you believe something is wrong and you do it, it's a sin to you. So remember going back to those examples of a man's garment and a woman's garment. Hey, see, I was showing you my opinion. I was showing you a picture of what I would consider a man's garment and what I would consider a woman's garment. Now, if, if I consider something a woman's garment and I know it's wrong to put on a woman's garment, then I would be sinning putting on what I believe to be a woman's garment. You see, so that's how you determine what to wear. If you think it's a man's garment and you put it on, now you're an abomination because you are breaking that law. Um, if I think something is a woman's garment and I put it on, I'm breaking that law and I'm an abomination. Now, this principle, I believe, is rephrased in James. It's, it's really the same thing, um, but this is another passage people will go to where it says here, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So that same principle, if you know something good to do and you don't do it, it's a sin to you. 
So the reason why I say it's rephrased is because it's really it's the same thing. If I think something is wrong and I do it, it's a sin. It's the same as me saying if I think something is right and I don't do it, it's a sin. Because if I think something is wrong, right, like putting on a woman's garment, to not do that is the right thing to do, is, is the good thing to do. So if I know something good to do, which is to wear men's clothing instead of women's clothing, and I don't do that, it's a sin. So, so really these two passages, they're sort of like, they're the same principle, they're just rephrased um, different ways. Now, I've got a list of questions here, and I'm just going to read them to you. Because now we're on, back on the topic of clothes. If we have these principles, right? We have the principle of trying to do what's best. Trying to do what's best by others. Um, you know, having the principle of, you know, putting on men's clothing, putting on women's clothing. Having the principle of being adorned in modest apparel, not costly apparel. We have all these principles in the Bible, but we don't have specifics. And this is where it comes down to maybe the culture and your conscience.